Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today on the show, we're diving deep into a hot topic that's been stirring up the GTA Online community ever since the San Andreas Mercenaries update released. Rockstar's recent decision to pull 186 DLC vehicles from the game with this update is here and we're pretty pissed. This was a major blindside, I think, to a lot of people who maybe didn't see the announcement where Rockstar hinted at this type of thing happening. But more particularly here, I don't think any of us were prepared for the sheer amount of vehicles, as well as the kinds of vehicles Rockstar decided to remove. So we have all that and more to discuss today, so let's get started. If you enjoyed this video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you want to stay up to date with everything GTA Online and Rockstar Games, then please consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notification turned on. So the first question players may have here, are these vehicles gone forever? Thankfully not. These vehicles weren't exactly removed from the game entirely, they're just no longer available for purchase from the usual in-game websites. Not that that's that much better. Instead, Rockstar is rotating them into different showrooms like Premium Deluxe Motorsport, Luxury Autos, the Vinewood Car Club, which is GTA Plus, and the LS Car Meet. Basically, they're creating a kind of artificial scarcity for these DLC vehicles, or FOMO, Fear of Missing Out, another term you may be familiar with, which they claim were lesser used by the community. All these ones they said were gonna be lesser used vehicles. Now, as Rockstar stated in their teaser newswire, let's just take their quote. Lesser used vehicles will be removed from in-game websites to streamline the browsing experience. These vehicles will be made available via event showrooms, the Lucky Wheel, and other places. Now, while it is true that not all these vehicles were top picks for every player, some were still really good performance-wise and great for racing. So why is this move controversial? Well, here's why. Firstly, choice and variety are one of the main reasons why GTA Online has remained popular for so long. By limiting access to these vehicles, Rockstar is taking away part of what made this game so enjoyable for many players. Not everyone's going after the absolute best vehicle in each class. Sometimes players just want to find a car that suits their unique playstyle or a car that just looks cool. GTA Online, let me stress again, is all about insane amounts of choice and variety, and so in this game, vehicles are more than just a means of transport. They're a way of expressing your style, your personality, and often form a key part of your gameplay strategy. And whether you're into street racing, off-roading, or just cruising around Los Santos, the diverse range of cars, bikes, and other vehicles available in this game has always been a huge draw for me, and removing the ability to purchase these vehicles whenever you want limits that choice and diversity. Yes, they're still in the game's code, but only being available to buy them when they happen to be in the rotation of a different showroom feels like a big step backwards in terms of player freedom and choice, and it's certainly not an experience improvement with Rockstar hiding behind the veil of streamlining the browsing in-game website experience. Now, secondly, this new rotation system adds a layer of unpredictability that can frustrate players. Before, if you wanted a vehicle, you could simply save up and buy it. Now you might need to wait for weeks or even months to get your hands on the car you want. My concern revolves around the unpredictability of the rotation system. We all know how satisfying it is to save up for that special vehicle, to finally make that purchase and take it for a spin. With this new system, that excitement is somewhat dimmed because even if you got the cash, you might not be able to buy the car you want. You're just at the mercy of the rotation here, which adds a layer of uncertainty and could potentially leave you waiting for weeks or even months to get your dream ride. And this community is already out of patience as we await the new GTA game that we know is coming, but Rockstar still is not officially announced and given a real name. So a move like this rips up almost 10 years of precedent with this game and it forcefully adds RNG into the game that shouldn't get it at this point in the game's life cycle. If GTA Online started like this, where we had all these showrooms and showcase buildings where half the DLC cars could be purchased and the other half would just be rotated into these showrooms and these stores, then maybe things would be different today because they could be Rockstar's version of store bundles that we see in Call of Duty, Fortnite, and other massively popular multiplayer video games of today. And I think that that's Rockstar's goal here. They know it's going to upset the GTA Online players, but it's absolutely testing for GTA 6 in my opinion and how to handle adding DLC vehicles in that game. I don't think they're going to lock cars behind store bundles in GTA 6 where you need to pay $10 to $20 per vehicle for each one that you want, maybe a few like that, but I do not think that there's a very likely chance that every single DLC vehicle in GTA Online will be available all of the time. 
there will be some in rotation, maybe with different cosmetic customization options, liveries, unique paint jobs, or even vehicles as a whole, like I was saying. And finally, my last point here, by creating an artificial scarcity, Rockstar does absolutely risk alienating part of its player base who see this as a blatant attempt to drive up demand and perhaps even real money transactions. A less cynical view here might suggest that they're trying to freshen up the game experience. However, many players like myself feel like this move doesn't respect our time or effort that they put into earning these vehicles vehicles and that I put into earning these vehicles. And I think that's Rockstar's end game here. They want to give off a perception of this artificial scarcity by limiting the amount of availability of these vehicles. Rockstar is also essentially driving up their desirability artificially here. In the world of economics, scarcity can create demand. And this has led some players to worry that Rockstar is trying to incentivize more real money transactions. After all, when your dream car finally shows up in the showroom, wouldn't you be more tempted to buy that shark card if you're a little short on in-game cash? It's a move that feels less player friendly and more profit driven, which has understandably caused major concern within the community. While it's already pretty bad now, there's still a ton of cars to choose from in the in-game websites, but who's to say what changes Rockstar is going to make with the December DLC or the next summer DLC or the GTA 6? I fear matters will only get worse here, so prepare accordingly. Now this part may drive you mad, but I do want a GTA game to have people longing for new content that they strive and they grind to unlock, but I don't want Rockstar to do it in this way. I want them to do it in a fair way. I don't want them to remove 30% of already existing vehicles that have been in the game for years just so they can re-release them as limited time DLC later on. I want Rockstar to actually make players want more content because the grind is deep, the grind is complex, but the grind at the end of the day is also very rewarding and it's worth your time. This is just not the right way to go about it, especially at this point in GTA Online's life cycle. The three points I made in today's video highlight a very different aspect of why this move has been incredibly controversial among the GTA Online community, and it will be interesting to see how Rockstar responds to this feedback and whether they decide to stick with this new model or revert back to the old system where all DLC vehicles were available for purchase at any time. I don't believe they will, but it's good to let Rockstar know that we don't want this system in the next game. Regardless of where you stand on this issue, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Do you agree with this decision? Do you disagree? Whatever your thoughts, sound off below and make sure to also submit some feedback to Rockstar as well, letting them know how you feel. Overall, the Mercenaries update is pretty fun in my opinion. The missions are interesting as I'm still working through Project Overthrow, but this update is just about what I expected in regards to size and scope, but I did not expect 186 DLC vehicles to get removed, and without a doubt that just ruined this DLC for a lot of people. After hearing that news, why should they even give the game a chance again? With all that being said, we're going to wrap things up right here. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video today, and if you did, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with all the best GTA Online, Red Dead Online, and Rockstar Games content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and even leaks, and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, and you're more than welcome to ask me any questions on those platforms. You can follow me at Hazardous HDTV, and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, everyone. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next GTA Online video. Adios, amigos.